Welcome to the new Camtasia Studio. Good day, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to TradingWithBill.com. Today's presentation, we are going to discuss horizontal resistance lines, horizontal support lines, and trend lines. This video, I'm going to show you how to identify support resistance and how to place proper trend lines on your charts. I'm also going to show you a little system I use to tell what the trend of the market is. A uh, quick way to see what the trend is without having to go through a lot of stuff. That's very, very easy. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is, this is a 15 minute chart of the New Zealand dollar Japanese yen. Let's ignore the time frame. We can say this is a daily chart, we can say this is a 5 hour chart, we can say this is a 2 hour chart, whatever the situation may be. In my personal trading, I use the daily chart, the 2 hour chart, the 1 hour chart, and the 15 minute chart. It is all condensed into one screen. So I have all four charts that I'm looking at at the same time. So what I like to do is I like to go, when I open my charts up, and I'm starting my trading day, I like to find out what the trend is. And once you identify the trend, you can pretty much keep that trend for quite some time on the daily chart. So this is how I do it. I basically and just part of the timeline is scrunch down my charts, your video, click play. okay, Notice and basically the it doesn't, you know, take a rocket scientist to figure out, not insulting any rocket scientists out there, but it doesn't a of your video, take a genius to figure out that this pair, the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, is in a downtrend. And that's what I want to know. I might draw a trend line to identify that on my daily chart. And if it breaks that trend line and retests it and then continues to the upside, well, maybe we have a change of trend. But for now, all I'm doing is I'm getting an idea of what is the trend of the current currency pair that I'm looking at. The nice thing about trading is, is that if you learn how to trade, whether you're trading currencies, whether you're trading options, whether you're trading futures, whether you're trading stocks, if you can analyze a price chart, then you can come up with support and resistance levels. You're going to use that all the time in your trading. We all need to know where support is, we all need to know where resistance is, we all need to know trend lines, and in the next video I'll talk about channel lines, where we're going to do channels, where you'll see how important it is that if a channel is broken that's significant in price action. Remember the only indicator on your charts that's not lagging is current price, and that's price action, right? All the other indicators are lagging indicators, and that's for another lesson. Let's talk about support and resistance. So we can ignore what time frame this is, and this is our chart. And what we want to do is, we want to turn around and we want to find out where is resistance. So first thing I do is, I take my little line thing here, and I take a look here, here, and I'm like, well, that's okay, also, that's all right, but that, this really here is a better resistance. Yes, this is the high, but as far as the resistance line goes, this is really better resistance. It has more touches, right? And you don't only have to have one, okay? We can use this if you wanted to. You can use that as a high. And in fact, why don't we do that? We, we'll do several resistance lines. A variety of presets. Okay. We have a new video player what I like to do is, MP3 on my resistance lines, other I like to use red. Table of contents, closed captions, quizzes, and even hot spots. So, we're going to come up here to this high, your video on and we're going to pop down here a resistance line. 
This player provides these little dots on my chart with just one video. Oh, what we call fractals. And if you're using an MT4 platform, and I'm not, I'm using the MTI charting package 4.0. So I'm not using an MT4 charting package that I'm working with currently. But if you go to MT4 charts, which most people use, or any charting package, you will have fractals. Right. So the next thing you want to do is you want to find your next area of resistance. Thanks for watching. So, we hope you enjoy Camtasia Studio. What does that look like? Looks like pretty decent resistance. We've had some pretty good reactions off of that. So we're going to stay with that. And then I would say this would be our last line of resistance. I would say that's a good resistance line. Now, the next thing we want to look at is we want to look at support. And we have some support levels in here. In fact, I think what we're going to do is we're going to move this line up. Let's move this line up. This way I can give you more examples. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this color because my support lines are in green. So let's use green and let's get some support lines. So if you took this here, not bad, and we'll take this here. That's another area of support. And I really don't want to clog up the charts too much, so that, I think that's enough. All right, so we now have our resistance levels, and we have our support levels. Well, why is this a resistance level? Well, this is a resistance level because of price action has reacted to these areas. For example, price action reacted there and it ended up giving us a down move right price action reacted here price action reacted here okay price action reacted here at this resistance level price action reacted here at resistance level here, price action actually broke resistance, came up, and came back down to, which would now we would call support, right? That's another, that's another subject altogether. But what I want to show you is that this is resistance. Price came up to this price level. So price came up to this price level. So if you take that right there, that's 82.20. Okay, so matched up perfectly. That's good. So this is a resistance level where price comes up to these levels and reacts to it. So price came up to this resistance level, 82.20, and ended up reacting to that level, comes down, what does it do? Turns around, retests it, what? Three times. When the fourth candle, it finally comes down. Right? Comes up, and finally comes down to your support. Alright? So if you were trading this to the downside, and you saw that price has come up to this, you missed this trade. And you're saying, well, this is in a downtrend, so I'm only looking for trades to the downside. So you see another resistance level get hit. And this gets hit four times, and then you get a bearish candlestick formation. You just take this trade to the downside. Your stop is only eight pips above the wick that spiked the resistance. I'd only put my stop eight pips above it. If I'm wrong, 
want minimal drawdown. And what happens? Price ends up coming back down. Okay? So, just to give you an example, now this is only a 15 minute chart, but it works on all charts. So if you took this down, and you took this down to that level, this moved 35 pips. And this took probably, uh, this looks like three hours. It takes four candles for an hour, so this looks like about three hours. So, again, same situation, price comes up to resistance. What does it do? It retests it three times, gives you a doji, clue number one. Next one is a bearish candle. You enter the trade, you come back down, and you take your trade back down to the next level of support. What happens down here? Now you're at support. If you know your candlesticks patterns and formations, and there's only seven that you really need to know, you have a decision candle, indecision, indecision, and a decision, which constitutes that we have a morning star at support. This high, next higher low, that's a signal to go to the long side. Where does it come up to? It comes back up to your resistance. You're out of the trade. Okay? That's why support and resistance levels are so important. So let's take a look at some support levels that basically have done the same thing. So if we come down, and we'll just take one or two because I went over a couple of them, but this hit the support level and came back up, right? This hit the support level, came back up. What does it do? It comes up, comes back, retests. Nice, so if you missed the move the first time, come back to charts, see these two candles go, damn, I missed the move. What happens? It comes back, gives you a nice retest. You have a bullish candlestick formation here. Then you have a doji, right? And then you have a nice red candle to the downside. You enter the trade, and away you go. Where does it come to? Your next level of support. What happens at the next level of support? Price comes up. Doesn't give you a lot of pips. Ends up going sideways because it's a 15-minute chart, and comes back, comes back down to support, breaks your support level here. However, this level of support at 79.93 gives you a double test no, that looks really ugly. I gotta be honest with you. Let's get rid of that. So what we'll do is we'll just say that we'll just put them together. Hit your area of support again. What does it do? Price comes up. Breaks through your now this comes resistance, breaks through it, comes back down, goes sideways, right? Goes into convergence mode, goes sideways, takes a breather. Typical price action, right? What does it do? Breaks down to the downside. If you took the trade, you didn't get a lot of pips. What does it do? It comes back down <laughs> and retests the same level of support. What do you have here? Again, you have a morning star. Decision candle, indecision, decision. This thing takes off. And this is what you were waiting for. You were patient. You didn't jump into trades here. You were patient. These lines were on your chart when you started your trading. This ends up moving up, breaks your... These are now resistance levels. Comes back up. And you end up with 127 pips. This is on a 15 minute chart. This is only about, uh, this is probably about four hours, four and a half hours. Okay, so this actually worked. Okay, so that's why support and resistance levels are so important. The other point I want to make to you is that you want to make sure that when you're looking at support and resistance, that you always look to the left side of the chart. Okay, you always look to the left of the chart. What was 
previous support? What was previous resistance? This candle is not going to give you that information. You have to, and this is current price, let's say, right? So you have to look left of the chart in order to find that. So let's just mark this. We're just going to mark these. I'm a visual trader. I, I like having this stuff written out so I know what this is. Okay. So we just I just mark I just mark this stuff. Now, as this gets broken, as this gets broken, I'll take it off. Because at that point it's not of any significance to me. It's not. It's not of any significance if support gets broken and ends up as resistance. It's no longer support. So the color gets changed, and of course, we just change what we have. Now, I do not write support and resistance on all my lines. I'm doing it for educational purposes, and just to show you how price reacts these levels okay the other issue that I wanted to talk to you about today was trend lines trend lines are very valuable so what I want to do is make sure that all of you understand the significance of having support and resistance lines on your charts they're important you can use different ways to get your support and resistance lines. One is you can use your Fibonacci tool and use your Fibonacci levels as your support and resistance. You can use pivot points as levels of support and resistance. Right? It'll give you all one, resistance one, resistance two, resistance three. Same as support, S1, support one, support two, support three. And then it'll give you the daily pivot, right? So you can add those to the charts. But you don't have to. You can do it just the way I did it. It's just it's going to give you the same information. Okay. So now that you have an understanding of support and resistance and why it's so important that we put these levels on our charts, because price action will react at these levels. And again, always look left to your chart. You know, if you see this and you're here, say you're here, and you see this, you know this is going to come up and this is going to bounce. And it does. It bounces, right? It bounces back down. Man, decision candle, two in decision candles, decision, man. What's that? That's its support. It's a morning star. Why don't we take that to the long side? Right? You're cautious here. This is resistance. Day 120. So you're cautious here. And you either decide to get out or you stick your stop right here and you say, you know what? I think it's going to continue to go because... Maybe you have a stochastics um, indicator on your chart, and it's pointed straight up, and you think price is going to continue to the upside, and you take and you continue to take it to the upside. Okay, that is money management, and that's what you need to decide in your trading of how long you're going to stay in the trade, when you're going to exit. Me, I'd probably just go to break even, and if it breaks it, right, go to break even. I'm already break even, so if it breaks resistance take it up. Once it breaks resistance and I see a blue candle, I'll probably get out. At least the second one. If I see a second lower high, I'm going to get out. Right? I don't want to be in the trade anymore. Because apparently there's a reason why that is. Well, isn't it funny that if you come over here and you take a look at this, if you come down to that next bar right there, man, what is that? Exactly at the same point of resistance from before. If you look left of the chart, it's so important to look left of the chart. Okay, so let's get rid of all this and let's talk about trend lines. Not only am I going to teach you about trend lines, I'm going to give you a trading strategy that is unbelievable and works off of trend lines.
Okay, so we know that this pair from the daily chart is in a downtrend. Okay, however, in our current chart, um, so if we were going to take this and say this was a daily chart, we would actually place ourselves a trend line. I would take this down, right, to there. This is a down trend line, okay. And then I get an aggressive trend line, and I take that down to here, okay. And what this does is this is showing me that I'm in a downtrend. I place my trend line and I color code my trend lines for different time frames. So if you see a magenta line on my charts, I know that's a daily time frame. If you see a dark teal trend line on my charts, you know that's a two hour chart. If you see a black trend line on my chart, you know that's a one hour chart. And if you see a teal trend line, you know that is a 15 minute chart. So we know that this is in a downtrend. So look at this strategy guys. What you're looking for is you're looking for three higher lows. Okay, three higher lows. So there's one, two, and three. All right? Why don't you come out here, bring this trend line like that. Okay? Price closes below the trend line. You can enter on this candle. Your stop's going to go like here. Maybe eight pips above that wick. Not going to give it a lot of room. All right? We're not. We don't want to. We don't want to put a little a lot of draw down here. It's either going to work or it's not. All right? Price come down. What does it do? It turns around and retests this trend line. Not to the pip, but close enough. Really, you can actually put another trend line there, but. Anyhow, ends up coming down, and you end up with so many pips. But it's an hourly chart or two-hour chart. But say you went to this here, and you came down, and you made 32 pips off of what we call a counter trend line and a downtrend. So the trend line is to the upside, but the trend is down. Okay. So let's look at another one. <clears throat> now we can look at one, and I'll show you when that doesn't work. Right? It doesn't always work. Right? Here's one. Oops. Let's turn my tool. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at this one. Three higher lows. Put our trend line up here. Right? What happens? It comes down. I don't get in on the first candle myself. Some people use this strategy, as soon as it breaks the trend line, they get in. I wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. But I probably would have gotten in here. I probably would have entered here. So, I probably would have made no pips and would have gotten out. Break even. Of course, as soon as I saw this higher low, and I see a decision, indecision, decision candle, I'm not going to take a loss, I'm going to get out. Right. What happens? Price continues to go up, go sideways. Uh, this one, you never got an entry here. If you, if you dig this one to the upside, okay, you really never got into this trade. Yeah, it broke. The, it broke it, but it's in a sideways at in a sideways price action, right? What happens? It comes up to your original trend line that you placed up here. So this one, there's no trade, right? Everybody understand? There's no trade. So we come over here, we do the same thing. Boom. There's our, there's our signal, and here's our entry. Price comes down. I see tweezers. 
I see price action showing weakness, and then I see a higher low. So I am out of the trade here. Okay. So it's a nice, quick little strategy that works. Basically, if you would have taken that trade, let's say you would have been aggressive like that, that was 48 pips. What was the other one? 28 pips. This is all on the same day. Well, I'll take 60 to 70 pips every day, any day, off a simple, simple little strategy. Okay, and this is on a 15 minute time frame. Okay, so I'm going to delete all of these. And let's talk about using uh, trend lines. When you draw a trend line, always remember that, oops, always remember that there is a aggressive trend line, and there's a non, oh, I didn't want to do that. There's a non-aggressive trend line. I, I like, this is really a bad example, but okay, that's a trend line, right? I like a three-touch trend line. One, two, three. We can ignore the rest of these. Let's say these didn't happen, but this is a trend line. All right. I don't like using the active candle as a point. Okay, I want my three touches and not including the active candle. So really, this looks like this is going to break this trend line on this pair. And I'm recording this on a Sunday, so of course the markets are closed. So you know, this is a possible entry here to the downside um, to continue the trend of the New Zealand. Well, fortunately, I can see what happens here. Um, once we're not at current market price. Oh, what happened there? What happened my what happened my trend line? Oh, maybe I can't do that. Huh? Wow, I lost my trend line and everything, didn't I, guys? All right, we'll just do another one. I hit the wrong button and the thing just... What you do is you bring your trend line out. What you want to do is you want the first touch. All right, we're gonna extend this into infinity. Okay, and then here is your aggressive trend line. So most of the time you're gonna get two trend lines. Remember, we've determined that this is a bullish pair, so this could be just be a retrace, right? And then we're looking to take this to the short side. So you want three touch trend lines. If you wanted to box this in, it's so much easier just to do that. Right, now you got yourself a little wedge here. Okay. The problem is, is price action gets closer into the wedge. What happens is the breakout is going to be smaller than if the breakout was here. If it comes to here, the breakout might come to the downside and then come back up into the wedge itself as it comes to the apex of this here. Okay. I hope you got something out of it. And again, I'd like to welcome you to tradingwithbill.com. And I will be placing this video on YouTube. So you can always look up that on YouTube. And in our next presentation, we'll get a little bit further into trend lines and channel lines and how we incorporate that in our everyday trading using different strategies and how we can make it less. A friend of mine told me years ago, he said, you know what? Simple 
is better. The simpler your, the simpler your strategy of trading is, the better off you are. So, I hope you learned something today. I really advise you to put fractals on your charts. It makes it life a lot easier. It tells you exactly what's going on. It's easier to do trend lines, that's for sure. And uh, it'll help you in your trading. So I hope you have a more understanding of support, resistance, and how to draw trend lines, uh, both the conservative and aggressive trend line. I'd like to thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video with tradingwithbill.com. Thank you so much, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye.